gloomy, murky afternoon. And cosy in the studio. It's day four of my six-day drawing. I'm going to angle the paper to avoid the sort of shadow being cast. So I think I might introduce her. a mysterious figure. The rather sleepy fly buzzing around the studio, probably woken up and regenerated by the heat from the stove. This is the sort of figure you don't want to meet in a marketplace. Particularly if you've travelled to a new city to avoid him. I'm just enjoying the folds of the fabric. One of my absolute heroes as an illustrator is the great Sir John Tenniel, who illustrated the Alice books, Alice in Wonderland, and Through the Looking Glass, and what Alice found there. And a um, remarkable thing about uh, Sir John Tenniel, well, there are many remarkable things, but one of the most remarkable things about him was that he was, um, he was actually uh, practically blind in one eye due to a... Uh, an accident. His father was a fencing tutor, and um, as, a, as a boy, Tenniel was injured in a fencing accident and actually lost uh, the sight in one eye. Um, but that didn't seem to affect his abilities when it came to the visual arts, and uh, he, uh, he started out with ambitions to be a, a history painter, which I think all Night, serious 19th century artists uh, had that ambition, but he um, he ended up as a an applied artist uh, working as a cartoonist, a political cartoonist for Punch, um, and taking commissions. Although he did get a chance to do one grand history painting, which is actually hanging in the House of Lords. Um, and I, I visited the House of Lords a while ago, a few years ago, and actually got to see it. It's a great big sort of one of those allegories of empire and uh, with, uh, you know, Britannia as a figure in there and, and the lion, I think. Um, and they're unmistakably um, drawn and painted by Tenniel. You can see a sort of his style coming through, even though it's a large oil painting. And... Um, the remarkable thing about Tenniel, not just his the loss of sight in one eye, uh, but also all the folds and creases that he put into his drawings, um, he, he did from memory, not from observation. 
And that's a remar remarkable thing, isn't it? To just have that sort of memory for the folds and uh, creases and sleeves and trouser legs and the way curtains hang. And I've always been rather in awe of that. I mean, I try in my own fashion to imagine the creases and folds of of garments because it's incredibly useful as as an illustrator. Um, and it's good to sort of approximate how things might look. I mean, the best way, obviously, is to draw from life, but sometimes that's not always possible, and and can if one is too dependent on direct reference. Um, it can sometimes lead to one's work becoming slightly stilted, I think, with something rather nice about the interpretive side of what we do. And, um, you know, one's own personal idiosyncratic stylizations creeping into your work. And there's an exercise that um, I uh, often recommend, um, which is to... Um, Choose a subject. Um, it could be, as I'm drawing here, a sort of cloaked figure, or it could be a London bus. You know, anything, anything you like, um, and uh, and attempt to draw it with no reference. And once you've done that, um, put that drawing to one side, and go and find reference. Uh, and draw it again with reference in front of you. So you're doing a faithful sort of copy of of reference, and then uh, and then put that drawing to one side, um, and sit down again and draw from memory, and put the three together. And what you'll find is the third drawing is a synthesis of the first two, but in a really interesting way because things will become heightened in your memory, your visual memory, um, or they might be pared down and simplified. Um, but you will end up with a slightly different and I think um, more interesting drawing in the third version. The scratching of the nib. Is music to my ears on this quiet winter afternoon. I struggle for a moment to actually remember it's Saturday, and that is classic. That's classic staying in Norfolk. Um, and I think over this Christmas period, particularly, um, losing sense of days of the week, you know, everything rather merges. And I love it. I love that, uh, that feeling of losing yourself in what you're doing and letting the days of the week just drift together. It's, I find it a wonderfully calming, relaxing thing. Um, it's a sort of thing you do sometimes on a holiday. Um, you know, where it really doesn't matter what day of the week it is, you know what you're doing and you know why you want to do it and, you know, there are no appointments to keep and journeys to make, you know, um, and it's a lovely relaxing feeling of just sort of letting go of the days of the week and just letting them flow together. And this... Uh, morning I did a uh, studio conversation with Katie and that is going to be posted up tomorrow as part of our weekly studio chat. It's a little bit different from the first one because Katie is in Brighton self-isolating and I'm here in Norfolk isolating but not because I have to. Uh, unfortunately, my children do rather than me, because they have had positive diagnoses for COVID, but they're 
Yeah, sort of as reasonably well. I mean, no, no one's got it in a severe form. Um, and of course, they're much younger. Um, and mercifully here, we've remained COVID free, but then we haven't got out much, so. And Joe, who's in the studio with me, has just said, don't speak too soon. So uh, he's absolutely right. So we're waiting the latest Downing Street announcement, which I think is going to come this afternoon at some point, which will tell us all what we are expected to do over Christmas. And when I say we, that's anyone who isn't a member of the cabinet or working in Downing Street, because they seem to be able to do what whatever they like. But one day, they will open the books and find out who was awarded those COVID contracts and where all the enormous amounts of money disappeared to. And there will be a reckoning, I fervently hope. And just another little note on the great Sir John Tenniel, illustrator of the Alice books and political cartoonist for Punch. Um, he would tell a little story about um, how he would do his weekly cartoon for Punch, drawing Bismarck, the Chancellor of Germany, walking down a, a gangplank in his famous cartoon dropping the pilot, or as many drawings of Britannia and her lion, or his allegories of Irish home rule, all these things. He would draw a weekly cartoon for Punch. And then he, he said he would go home to his house. His wife died um, very early on in their marriage, and he never remarried, um, and instead lived with his sister. And the two of them would sit on a Saturday afternoon, actually, uh, and wait for the first edition of Punch to arrive at their house, and they'd sit by the fireside, and, uh, and then the first edition of Punch would be dropped off, and Tenniel would say he would open Punch and turn to his cartoon and feel, and these are his words, the weekly pang. And that's a wonderful detail because essentially what he's saying is that uh, he always, when he saw the finished result of his work, he always felt that he could do better. It wasn't as wonderful, insightful, or as brilliant as he wanted it to be, it always slightly fell short. And I think that's very telling. I think that's so true for anyone who wants a long and productive career in the visual arts and particularly illustration. Um, one is always attempting to perfect, attempting to get better. You never, you never achieve exactly what you want to achieve and that's a really good creative spur uh, it stops you becoming self-satisfied it means you continue to to sort of strive and challenge yourself and even someone as eminent and talented as John Tenniel felt the weekly pang when he looked at his cartoons and my weekly pang comes tomorrow on Sunday mornings when I see the cartoon I've drawn for The Observer published and I open my Sunday newspaper and I see it and I always think of John Tenniel and his weekly pang. So yes, here is day four of the sixth day drawing, a rather 
ominous and cowled figure joining our cast list. Now I'm casting a shadow over the drawing. So as you see, week five and six, I'm going to have to really go for it to, uh, to fill out this drawing unless I create an extension and continue over the Christmas week. Who knows? We'll see.